Welcome back to part two of solving trig equations using substitution. In part one, we performed substitution for multiple angles. Here we'll perform substitution using a trig identity. Looking at our first example, we want to solve cosine two theta minus cosine theta equals zero. So notice in this example, both angles are not double angles. Here we have a double angle of two theta, and here we have just theta. So we're not going to let u equal two theta, we're actually going to perform a substitution for a cosine two theta. We'll use the identity cosine two theta equals two cosine squared theta minus one. Notice how this will give us one equation that just has cosine thetas. So performing substitution, we'd have two cosine squared theta minus one minus cosine theta equals zero. This equation is in quadratic form. So let's write this as two cosine squared theta minus cosine theta minus one equals zero. Notice how here, if it was helpful, we could let u equal cosine theta, which means we could write this equation as two u squared minus u minus one equals zero, and then solve this by factoring. But let's go ahead and factor it in this form here. We'll have two factors where this product will be equal to zero. The first term is two cosine squared theta, so we'll let one factor be two cosine theta, and the other factor be cosine theta. And now we want to place the factors of negative one in the second positions, so that the sum of the inner product and outer product is equal to negative cosine theta. So notice how if we put the factor of negative one or minus one here, we'd have negative two cosine theta as the outer product, which means the other factor here must be positive one, so we'd have plus one. So we have plus one cosine theta, which would give us negative cosine theta. So this is factored correctly. And now we want to find the angles that make these products equal to zero, meaning we want to find the solution to two cosine theta plus one equals zero, or cosine theta minus one equals zero. So solving for cosine theta here, we would subtract one and then divide by two. So we'd have cosine theta equals negative one half, or here we just add one to both sides, so we'd have cosine theta equals positive one. Now we should recognize that having cosine function values of negative one half and positive one are ones that we find on the unit circle, are ones that we can find on the unit circle. Let's first solve it using the unit circle, and then we'll talk about using reference triangles. So going to the unit circle, to solve cosine theta equals negative one half, since on the unit circle x equals cosine theta, we're looking for x coordinates of negative one half. Well, we know x is negative in the second and third quadrants. Notice how x equals negative one half here at 120 degrees, or two pi divided by three radians, as well as here, at 240 degrees, or four pi divided by three radians. So these are the first solutions from the first factor. Let's go ahead and write these down. Here we have theta equals, again, two pi divided by three radians. Let's call it theta sub one. Theta sub two is equal to four pi divided by three radians. If the interval is given in radians, we should give these solutions in radians. We also want to know where cosine theta equals one. So back to the unit circle. Notice this point here has an x coordinate of positive one at zero or two pi radians. And because our interval includes zero and does not include two pi, we'll give theta sub three as zero radians. So it is important to remember that using interval notation here, zero is included and two pi is not. So we have theta sub three equals zero radians. Now, if we were going to use reference triangles to determine where cosine theta equals negative one half, notice how when we have a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle, the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So cosine 60 degrees is equal to positive one half, which means to determine where cosine theta equals negative one half using reference triangles, we sketch a 60 degree reference angle in the third and fourth quadrants where cosine is negative. So we have a reference triangle here, as well as here. For both of these reference triangles, 
the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse would be negative one divided by two or negative one half. So this angle would be 120 degrees, which is two pi divided by three radians. And the second angle is here, which would be 180 degrees plus 60 degrees, which equals 240 degrees, which equals four pi divided by three radians. And there's no reference triangle for cosine theta equals one because that point would lie on the x-axis. Remember to convert from degrees to radians, we multiply by pi divided by 180 degrees. So just showing one of these conversions here, if we want to convert 120 degrees to radians, we'd multiply by pi over 180 degrees. Here we have a common factor of 60. There are two 60s and 120, three 60s and 180, which would give us two pi divided by three radians for 120 degrees. And we could do the same for 240 degrees, but I'll leave that for you to check. To check our solutions graphically, what we could do is graph y equals the left side of the equation, which would be y equals cosine two theta minus cosine theta, and y equals the right side, or y equals zero, and make sure those two functions have points of intersection at these three angles. To save some time, I've already done this. y equals cosine two theta minus cosine theta is graphed in blue. y equals zero is graphed in red. Here's the interval from zero to two pi. So notice how from the interval from zero to two pi, not including two pi, we do have one, two, three points of intersection, which do occur at zero radians. This is two pi divided by three radians, and this is four pi divided by three radians. Let's take a look at a second example. Here we have sine theta minus sine two theta equals zero. And again, notice how here we have a double angle and here we don't. So we're not going to let u equal two theta. We'll perform a substitution for sine two theta. We'll use the identity sine two theta equals two sine theta cosine theta and perform a substitution. So this would give us sine theta minus two sine theta cosine theta equals zero. Now we do have sines and cosines in our equation, but notice how these two terms do have a common factor of sine theta. So we'll go ahead and factor out sine theta should leave us with one minus two cosine theta equals zero. So we have two factors here. So this product is equal to zero when sine theta equals zero or when one minus two cosine theta equals zero. So this equation here is already solved for sine theta. Let's go ahead and solve this for cosine theta. So we would subtract one on both sides and divide both sides by negative two, which would give us cosine theta equals positive one half. So we want to find the angles theta on the given interval from zero to two pi, where either sine theta equals zero or cosine theta equals positive one half. Again, we should recognize we can find these trig function values on the unit circle. We could also find them using reference triangles or the x and y axes. Let's first find our solutions on the unit circle Let's first solve sine theta equals zero. Because sine theta equals y in the unit circle, notice how we have a y coordinate of zero here along the x-axis as well as here, which means sine of zero as well as sine two pi and sine pi is equal to zero. Remember though, two pi is not in the interval, so we have the solution of zero and pi radians on the given interval. So let's write these down. We have theta, sub one equals zero radians, theta sub two equals pi radians. And now we'll solve cosine theta equals one half. So now we're looking for an x coordinate of one half on the unit circle, which occurs here at pi over three radians and here at five pi divided by three radians, which are also solutions to our equation. So we have theta sub three equals pi divided by three radians and theta sub four equals five pi divided by three radians. Now, if we were going to try to find our solutions using reference triangles, let's first start with cosine theta equals one half. Notice how cosine 60 degrees 
is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which would be one half, recognizing that we have a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle, we can label the short leg one, hypotenuse two, and the longer leg square root three. So because cosine theta is equal to x over r, cosine is positive where x is positive. So if we sketch a 60 degree reference angle and triangle in the first quadrant, as well as the fourth quadrants, we should be able to determine these two solutions. So this would be one, this would be square root three, and this is two, two, negative square root three. So this angle here, which is 60 degrees, or pi over three radians, has a cosine function value of positive one half, and so does this angle here, which is 300 degrees, or five pi divided by three radians. And then for sine theta equals zero, we have to recognize that y is zero along the x-axis, which should be here and here, giving us an angle of zero radians as well as pi radians. And then finally, to check this graphically, we can graph y equals sine theta minus sine two theta and y equals zero and see if we have intersection points at these four locations. And I've already graphed it. Notice how we have one, two, three, four points of intersection on the interval from zero to two pi, not including two pi, which does give our solutions of zero radians, pi radians, pi divided by three radians, and five pi divided by three radians. I hope you found this helpful.